we don't we don't think that they're going to like actually finish everything up today. We don't we think the March 2nd deadline is going to have to be pushed out. They'll need a few more days, a few more weeks of negotiations to kind of hammer out the details, but we are actually quite optimistic that at some point here, maybe as early as early summer, we'll actually reach resolution of the of the trade deal of the trade war between the two um, countries. We'll see. We'll see exactly how that works out. One of the things that we're looking for in the near term is whether or not this trade deal um, comes to an end, this trade war again comes to an end, is we think that we'll get a bounce in activity in the near term and that will help um, support um, confidence. Tony, I'll put the same question to you. Your expectations near term and also long term. Yeah, near term, uh, I think Rob is right. I think we're going to, uh, I think they, they've shown enough progress and they're talking about most of the right things with the, the, the six memorandum that they're talking about. Those are the right uh, issues. And there may be some sugar thrown in with commitments to, uh, to make purchases that will show enough progress that we're not going to see an escalation on, uh, on tariffs or new tariffs uh, imposed. But I'm, I'm not optimistic in the you know, near medium term of the, the existing tariffs coming down either. These are really, really complex issues and they're going to take a long time to negotiate and to get to, you know, verifiable solutions. We could see in the short term things like the purchases, you know, buying soybeans and, and, uh, and some other products as shows of good faith. T Tony, how united is uh, the president's team on, on how the negotiations are shaping up and, and kind of finalizing? Is there a risk of uh, any rupture, any resignations if they don't go in, in certain directions? I would be surprised by that. I think they're going to uh, go the direction that the, that, the, that the president goes. And at the end of the day, if, uh, if he says it's a good deal and, uh, and you know, we're, we're, as, or as the way he'll say it, where it's a luxurious and beautiful deal, I think they'll go along with it. I don't see our, you know, former colleague Larry, uh, Larry Kudlow stepping down, uh, certainly, or, uh, or the others. I think they'll stick together. I, I think they have to have a recognition now after the, the talks that they've had that these, th this is going to be a long road. It's hard to come up with, on the structural issues, verifiable uh, evidence in the short term that China is doing those things. And don't forget, the Chinese have some asks of the United States as well. Yeah, what's that? I mean, let's talk about that in a moment. Sure. My, my other question for you, though, was does the market need to start living with the notion that tariffs could go up at any time based on the enforcement mechanisms we may be looking at? Oh, that's, ab right. that, that's absolutely right. Whether, whatever they do with these 301 tariffs, right, it's clear that tariffs are a policy of the administration and that they're going to use it going forward. So even if they resolve these, pulled these off, I think people still have to be alert to the fact they could come so back. So how, how does confidence rebound in that environment where you got this hair trigger over your head all the time? It's like, it's like any uncertainty, though. There's lots of uncertainties in the world, and businesses are going to have to adjust around that um, particular uncertainty with the knowledge, though, that when things got bad, when we started to see economic pain in the U.S., the administration did find some paths forward and things got eased up. Remember, if we talked in November, we were, we were fearing escalation. Well, I mean, uh, USDA today, Tony, says that we've paid $7.7 billion so far yeah. to farmers uh, in, uh, in tariff, uh, you know, basically aid. To compensate for the for the uh, yep. for the tariffs, yeah, that's right. I mean, look, you can't you can't do that forever. Um, so you know, there is there is harm on both sides right now with the existing tariffs, and it seems to be sufficient harm that they can sit down at the table and have substantive discussions on these big issues. But they're very thorny issues. You know, I mean, some of these things, uh, it, it, you know, it might take years to determine whether. Uh, they're really doing a good job on, on forced technology transfer. Uh, you know, JVs might be something quickly that we see, but there may be other non-tariff barriers that get in the way of, uh, you know, free activity from foreign firms operating uh, in China. So it, so it is going to take a lot of time, and I think we're, we are going to be living, at least during this administration, we are going to be living with this, uh, you know, sort of Damocles over all of our trading relationships. And don't forget, we're talking about auto tariffs with respect to Europe right now, too. And Rob, what does all of this mean for the Fed and future Fed policy? And obviously, we got those minutes this week. One of the big headlines that came out of that was that maybe quantitative tightening will wind down this year. We've got more officials talking later today, and then you've got the Fed Chair Powell testifying in Congress next week. That's right. So they take all of this on board. They're not going to make political statements. They're not going to, you know, front run any damage uh, from tariffs and try to ease that pain. But as they have always done, if these things weigh on activity, which they seem to do, they will respond. The biggest response they've done so far is, as you said, it looks like they're going to stop the roll off of the balance sheet um, this year.